So uh, my topic will be uh, using big data for software engineering estimation. Uh, mainly what are the advantages and disadvantages and how does it uh, help? Uh, uh, so this is my uh, brief, uh, brief bio. Uh, two MS by research degrees and then mainly worked in the IT and quality assurance in multinational firms. So, uh, okay. so I'll just... Uh, so what is uh, software engineering estimation? It just uh, involves predicting effort, schedule, manpower, amongst other, uh, other matrices like defects. Uh, there are many other matrices, but mainly we predict effort, schedule, and manpower needed for a, a successful project. It's very crucial for uh, dev, maintenance, support, and uh, it... Uh, uh, the estimates will guide uh, your planning and budgets that you uh, that you allow for developing the software. So mainly, the result of uh, these models will just have uh, effort uh, or or schedule. So the schedule will be uh, is just derived from effort and uh, the manpower that is needed, how much of personal uh, uh, is needed, and uh, um, and so on and so forth. The outputs can be. Uh, many other outputs also, but these are the. Uh, this is just a guideline of to what the model does. So basically, there are some inputs, and then there is a model that just processes the inputs and gives you the answers. And so, why is estimation accuracy important? It's very important to guide uh, resource allocation, to do effective project management, and guiding project scope. Okay, so the the main. Uh, 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 the main, you know, like steps are you just define a product scope. Uh, basically, that will be whether it's a development project or it's a, a enhancement or maintenance or it's a preventive maintenance uh, or it's just a, a fix support and services. So that will all be the project scope. And uh, mainly you will gather the estimation data. Mostly it will be... Um, context sensitive data that's relevant to your to your project to your organization you'll just gather that then you'll just select an estimation method and then uh, and then the estimation method are multifold multifold there are many estimation models you'll select one of those models I'll, uh, there's a detailed slide that I have on the different models and then you'll estimate uh, and then you'll derive the outputs namely effort schedule and manpower and uh, mostly these uh, estimates will not be accurate due to several reasons. Uh, the estimation accuracy is a big challenge uh, in terms of the models that are, uh, that are in vogue. So mostly these, uh, the estimates will not be accurate. So you will have to just, uh, during the software development life cycle, you will have to just uh, uh, review and uh, correct those estimates using the uh, uh, iterative procedure, or you have to just adjust the estimates so that the um, the estimates will converge to the actuals. So, so basically, one of the important challenges uh, that's currently uh, uh, that currently exists is the accuracy of the uh, uh, of the outputs that are being provided by uh, these models that are there in work. So, what are the different uh, types of estimation models? Estimation methods in software engineering include analogy-based models. So analogy is you just compare one project to another project. So pass similar ones using uh, some parameters like complexity, skill level, or size, uh, development platform. So all these are the, the parameters. You'll compare one to the other uh, parameters. And mainly this, this will be done using the historical data that's... Uh, uh, that's available with the uh, ISBSG. And uh, it can also be done using statistical analysis uh, based on your, your context sensitive data, that's data from your current project and your organization. You can just do statistical simple regression. Uh, you can just develop a regression model. And uh, this regression model can have uh, some inputs like software size, complexity, and team experience. And it can uh, it can give you provide your output like effort, 
and it can provide provide output like what's the manpower and so on and so forth and uh, size based models they just uh, estimate the size of the software that you're going to develop and then uh, divided by the productivity ratio and uh, this uh, uh, this this can in my opinion provide a lot of uh, variance to the estimates because the productivity ratio it varies between the uh, different uh, different technical staff it will also vary during different times of the day and uh, you know so just uh, using a size and deriving effort will it's possible to do it but there'll be a lot of, lot of variance in the estimates maybe a simulation model will be more accurate to just depict the variance of the productivity productivity ratio so another one is the expert based model like the um, uh, expert based model so you just uh, rely on uh, rely on uh, experts to just uh, to just provide you an estimate so basically uh, people who have just uh, done this day in and day out they'll be able to just tell you it's, it's going to take a month or it's going to take more than uh, six months you cannot do it within two months so and then uh, group based models group based models will be just to uh, uh, get different uh, uh, experts and then each one of them will just provide a, uh, an estimate for for the uh, for the uh, for the software that you're going to develop and hybrid models will just combine all these uh, all these models uh, all these approaches uh, they also have uh, uh, many estimation models that are hybrid okay so these are the different estimation models so what are the challenges so basically, it's all very easy to say that I can just, uh, as long as I have the requirements, I can just uh, use historical data and I can just develop some mathematical models and I can just derive the estimates. But that's uh, easier said than done. So why is it difficult? Because very frequently you will have unclear requirements. So it will not be documented correctly or some part of it will be missed out. And uh, there won't be a standard language to, uh, to write requirements. So it will also be uh, uh, it will also be vague. The requirements might have been uh, noted down by a, uh, by a technical person, and the estimation uh, may be done by a QA person. So uh, you know, like their their perceptions may may differ. And uh, so basically, what are the challenges? You may not have a clear, concise, well-defined you know like document that describes the requirements. And basically, your historical data may not be up to date. Uh, they may not have taken the pains to just uh, 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 do configuration management and and just you know like baseline the data that uh, measure that measure the different project uh, project parameters and baseline the data. And so it may it may not be updated. It may be um, it may be poor quality. The data may not be consistent. And there may be some elements that are critical to the estimation process that's missing and all that. And mostly if you see, if you just take a small example of just uh, of developing a website, okay, it can be just a website and uh, say PHP or MySQL. If you just try and run uh, all these different estimation models like size-based, or if you go for, if you just use Kokomo, uh, or, or, or if you just use function points to derive, you know, like FP productivity ratio, and you know, like uh, otherwise you use simple statistical model, or you use a, a simple expert estimation technique like the work breakdown structure, and uh, to to estimate, you'll frequently see that you'll get different uh, estimates for the same project, you know. So which one to take? So which one is more applicable in the context? Why does my WBS say it's going to take 70 hours? And Kokomo says it's going to take 200 hours, and Function Point says it's going to take 120 hours. So that shouldn't be the case. Ideally, whatever estimation models you use, uh, it should all converge to a single point estimate. You should get just uh, you should just get one one point estimate. Whatever whatever models that you use, because the project is not uh, it's not different. It's just the uh, it, it's just the same project that you're running these different models on. And then you get different uh, different outcomes, and then uh, what could be is that there could be some unforeseen challenges. For example, uh, it's something that your dev team might not have done before, or you know, like uh, 
so uh, it may just take them you know like more time to get uh, 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 an issue or bug resolved okay or it can be with a service provider like aws where they are hosting their websites there can be many technical challenges okay so what will be the solution to start off with if you want to have a very transparent process of estimation that uh, that eventually yields a high uh, high accuracy of estimates then one thing is sure uh, that you need to have very clear requirements this requirements must be well defined it must be in a language universal language that's understood both by the uh, by the technical people as well as the qa person who's estimating and others who are stakeholders who are involved in the development process like testers qa testers or it can be like uh, uh, network engineers so, uh, so it has to basically it has to just kind of like uh, it has to be very concise and clearly defined and it has to be only one universal language it has to be written in without uh, any ambiguity and uh, historical data must be clean and uh, up to date and that can be you know like you can derive you know like maybe an analogy uh, from the uh, from projects that you have already done based on from historical data you can derive some analogies and then what should be the ideal cases all the estimates converge and also these uh, it doesn't vary from the actuals significantly like it shouldn't be the case when i have an estimate using kokomo it says it's uh, it's going to take 72 hours and it's finally taking 300 hours or for that matter if you use a size based like fp web productivity ratio and it says 120 hours then your actual is just 60 hours so either way that shouldn't be the case the estimate should converge to the actuals that should be a uh, 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 the way that you evaluate your model, okay, and these models can also all uh, can be like pre-existing models that are already there, uh, that are being used in the industry extensively, like COCO and more, uh, or it can just be like something that you uh, that you that's tailor made, you know, like for your current project, it can be a simple uh, regression based techniques, a technique that just uses uh, context sensitive data and it also uses derives some patterns from historical data. So, and all, uh, and nothing unforeseen, all the incidents should be there in the incident management system. Your unforeseen technical challenges should all be visible and you should be uh, readily able to just tap in from that and derive it. So if you have all this in place, then your estimation models will work correctly and it will also be reliable and also accuracy won't be a, uh, won't be a problem to deal with. And if you see here, uh, this graph, it just shows uh, the simple variance of effort that can occur in, in a SDLC. Uh, if the, uh, depending upon how volatile the requirements are. So uh, uh, requirements volatility is something, uh, uh, it's like, uh, how frequently the requirement changes or you know like how frequently the stakeholder or the customer just changes what has to be done and how how quickly the team is able uh, is able to adapt to it so this is a simple monte carlo simulation so the monte carlo simulation it shows that the effort can vary so much for just you know like uh, uh, it's something like a sensitivity analysis with respect to uh, with respect to uh, volatility so it shows that it can vary so much. So your your uh, your effort can vary so much, and so basically any estimation models that you're using or that you have uh, custom fit or uh, for your for your project should take into account uh, such variability. That in case there is uh, volatility of requirements, then your estimation model should also be able to predict that the effort is so much. It'll, it'll take so much to uh, it. It should be able to correct itself and and also it should be able to correct itself and it should it should be able to predict that your effort will be so much because the the, the whole process has become slightly more volatile and uh, okay so here is another uh, another monte carlo simulation for example it says what's the mean uh, defect removal effort if there is a review uh, say a code review in the project which is called as uh, say if there's an inspection or if there is no inspection, there's only testing. So here, in this scale, there is 100% of the defects are removed by inspection. And then 0% inspection and 100% is done only in the testing. You see the mean effort 
can uh, can vary so much you know it's almost twice the effort taken is almost twice if you're just going to uh, find all the defects only in the testing phase but then the effort is only half if you have an inspection or a code review or uh, or a review phase where where you know like all, all, uh, 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 everyone will just sit down in review phase and uh, find out where the defects are liable to occur or where they are occurring and they remove it so if you see in uh, why uh, i've just suggested this is your estimation model uh, should also take into account uh, that the scenario where for example there is a review or whether or there's partial review or whether there is no review and everything is done during testing. So, so these are all uh, implicit parameters. Okay. So these parameters we have to somehow incorporate into the, uh, into your estimation models and these parameters can be many. So these are not like uh, formally understood parameters, uh, like skill level or complexity of the project based on which uh, you have parametric estimation models. These are underlying factors that one, you can sense that, you know, like review is, will definitely reduce the, uh, uh, will, uh, will reduce the effort. Whereas inspection will definitely increase the, uh, I mean, without inspection, uh, if you're doing only testing, it's going to just increase the effort. So all this you implicitly understand, but there's, uh, there's no way that uh, uh, some of your some of the models that we may be using may not be capturing these parameters. Okay, so you have to just uh, figure out all these parameters that may affect the uh, the overall effort and somehow add them into your uh, uh, into your parameter uh, into your estimation model or your process. You should just add them into it. Okay, so once you add them, then the model will all should also be robust to say that. At a person, for example, if I, if, uh, if there is a lot of review that is done in your uh, by your teams, then uh, automatically the model should adjust uh, should adjust and then say that it's going to uh, it should show a reduced effort. So here, so this is another uh, uh, another Monte Carlo simulation where it depends upon the problem or solution complexity. The effort just uh, uh, varies considerably. For example, if it's uh, uh, if it's a simple uh, a simple problem, but the solution is complex, or if it's a uh, if it's a difficult problem, the solution is easy. Okay, where or if it's uh, both both the solution and the uh, uh, and the and the problem are complex, then it's uh, you know the effort will vary considerably. Okay, and uh, it's not it may not be very easy to just quantify. Uh, it may not be very easy to quantify what is the complexity level of a unit requirement. You may be possibly uh, just be involved in a, a uh, in, in a bulk of requirements, uh, bulk of requirements. So you may, it, uh, it may be that, that one of the requirements is highly complex or it may have a uh, complex solution that's going to just prolong the effort. And there is no way that your estimation model is robust or it's capable of uh, handling this uh, uh, this kind of scenario that can occur. Okay. These are just examples. So what I've just listed is three examples where these parameters are not properly considered in uh, in the estimation models that are uh, currently in use, but they can have an effect on the on the overall effect. So whatever parameters that you discover dynamically, so these have to be added to the to the estimation process, the estimation model, and so that it may take into account wide variances that you can get. Uh, when the requirements are volatile or when the when suddenly you have a solution that's very complex, going to be complex and you're not aware of it. And uh, here, so here, so these are the unforeseen uh, factors. So there are some foreseen factors. See, for example, if you have worked on a task, say for example, a developer is working on a task, okay? If you worked on a task like day in and day out, so the next, next day you're going to do it, you're going to do it very easily then you're not going to make any errors. You're not going to make any mistakes on the books. So it's going to be very easy. But then what does your estimation model say? It'll always say that it's going to just uh, say, it's going to take 20 hours to finish. It. But then if you have a lot of hands-on experience in, similar, uh, uh, in a similar task, and then it's also recent that you have done it day in and day out. So it's not going to take 20 hours. It's just going to finish in five hours. Okay, so so these are unforeseen factors that we normally don't capture the big models, you know, they don't uh, consider these parameters. So you have to have a way of just adding all these uh, 
the small parameters that may influence the effort into the model. For example, peer review, this is what uh, I showed the simulation, Monte Carlo simulation, and external dependencies may, may also influence like market conditions, uh, social, cultural, legal rest restrictions, industry standards, okay, financial considerations, license, use of license, unlicensed software. There are so many issues that we have to consider and your model also should be robust to handle changes in that. Suddenly, supposing somebody says that, okay, uh, I'm not going to use uh, Microsoft Access because there's a licensing issue. So I'm going to use a flat file for my database. Okay, then uh, you should have a, the estimation model should have a way of just uh, accounting for that. So there is some licensing issue with Microsoft uh, Access. My organization does not have a license. So I cannot use uh, uh, MS Access as a database. So I have to use a flat file. So how, how does that impact the effort? So the effort is going to increase because uh, writing code to retrieve uh, data and update data to a flat file will take more time than it's to use. Uh, your SQL queries and update Microsoft Access uh, database. So these are all some parameters. For example, supposing you have cutting edge innovation. So all these, your models that are using some standard, you know, like data and standard processes, they may not be able to predict. So you have to have a way of adding all these parameters into the, uh, into your estimation model. Okay? And this can be as uh, he, uh, uh, the more the parameters you add, the better will the model be to uh, be active, to just handle any situations that may occur because of uh, such exigencies. And here, if you see, for example, adherence to process, we all know there are the three, uh, uh, three important, you know, like uh, uh, in the triangle of in software development, people, process, and technology. So all these are very important, okay? People play a big role. They have to be technically skilled. They have to be, uh, 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 you know, and then like uh, 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 technology also. Technology is important. So so there has to be knowledge of the platform. Uh, and then the third one is the process. Okay? And the process also is very important. Do I conduct weekly status review meetings? Do I have a formal, uh, do I have formal documentation for, for the requirements. Uh, the CMMI model specifies so many key process areas. So, you know, like uh, hundreds or 200 different process areas specified. So all these, if you see uh, high maturity organizations, they uh, they are very highly process compliant. So basically it's very important. Like do I conduct weekly status review meetings? Do I conduct a, a peer review? Do I have a formal testing team? Okay. Uh, do I use any baselines, organizational data? Do I just use uh, uh, any historical data? All these, uh, all these processes, they definitely will affect the software development effort. So many models, like for example, parametric estimation models, or you know, they don't consider it directly. Okay, but there are a lot of these hidden factors that uh, that influence the effort, uh, that influence the uh, actual effort. So if it influences the actual effort, then your estimation models should also adapt themselves to just uh, be in sync with what is going to be the actual effort. Okay. So we all know what is the adverse risk that we face by just uh, uh, providing inaccurate estimations. So here, if you see, uh, so these unforeseen parameters that, that we just understand and, uh, okay, there are so many that uh, everybody can brainstorm. So these parameters should be added into the model. And also, if possible, we should just take historical data, collect historical data, and also create a baseline so that you can just uh, uh, tap into that uh, uh, into the data and just derive it. So here, if you see, it's a small. Uh, so so this is the effect of adding new uh, newly discovered parameters. So it's just not like. Uh, skill level or project complexity of product or solution complexity or requirements complexity and all that. So what uh, what this is, is I'm adding, say, a parameter like, you know, like uh, adherence to coding standards, for example, uh, adherence to, you know, like review, okay? And then uh, I'm also adding a parameter whether I've accounted for any uh, uh, power cuts that may occur and then 
uh, or downtime when your computers may just be under maintenance. So all these are parameters that you add. So based on that, you will just revise what is the, your original estimate. If you see here, over a period of time, the revised effort will converge to actuals. So this is the revised effort. This is the this is the actual. So there's a possibility that once these implicit parameters that are not uh, uh, that are not readily discussed that do affect the actual effort, you know, but you don't uh, uh, you, no model uh, is just capturing all those uh, all those parameters. So you have to find a way of adding those and also revising your effort in an iterative cycle. Then you come to a situation where your revised effort will be equal to the actual effort. So here, so now if you see, so mainly uh, the problem if you, if you see about using this historical data is that historical data uh, is may not be context sensitive, so it has to be uh, calibrated to your current organization and your and your current project. So. Uh, so here, what you see is how does the historical uh, data fit into the uh, uh, into the estimation uh, process? So basically, your estimation will be an iterative process where I just predict, I correct the estimate, and then I revise it. So there are some risk risks that I, that can occur. So I just control and adapt the risk. Then historical data, I just gather, clean, and update it. And historical data, I just gather the historical data, I clean it, and and I keep updating the historical data on a continuous basis. And then I just uh, keep redefining the, the parameters that will actually uh, uh, affect the actual effort. Uh, what's the actual effort for the project? And I'm going to add those parameters back into the estimation project and keep iterating till I get accurate, uh, accurate estimates. So in this context, how will big data, you know, big data is really large. It's there over many, uh, uh, many trillions of bytes it's there in many multiple servers across the world. Sometimes uh, it's even located under the sea uh, and the servers are located under the sea and, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, uh, so if you use, for example, big data, what is the, uh, how will it help in the software estimation process? So big data is just like, uh, uh, you're just having data for all possible scenarios so that the data becomes large okay so once you just uh, have a, a kind of a big data, database in place then what you can do is you can just uh, 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 identify patterns in that and then uh, sync up your current estimation trends your project trends with your estimation model current trends in the project for example there is a risk that has occurred okay uh, no, the risk that that has occurred in the project so my my historical data baseline, which is also big data, has that uh, has that incident that is uh, 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 that's clearly uh, that's clearly been uh, documented, and then I'm just going to use that and adjust my estimate, saying that uh, say suddenly, for example, what you should see is when you're just working on something, so automatically your uh, all your you know like uh, uh, quality systems and your uh, your you know like the systems where you just enter your project plans and then uh, enter your actual should work in sync. And it should say that I'm the estimate, I'm just increasing it by so much. By uh, by a certain by a certain percentage, I should say, I'm just increasing the estimates. Okay, so that should be the uh, eventual result. Okay, so basically, uh, big data is not historical data, but historical data can be big data because I'm just going to add more and more. I'm going to add everything under the sun uh, all the events that have occurred, uh, everything under the sun, because I have the robust infrastructure to just uh, the capacity to uh, to store so much of data. So I'm just going to add everything under the sun that may affect my uh, my project and put it into a database. So that's what is big data. Okay. <clears throat> so. In Nevada, uh, yeah, yeah, just a short. Uh, you have raised thirty minutes now. So please. Uh, and within within two minutes. Okay, so these are the publicly available repositories for software estimation research. You can just look up the PPT. So I'll just very quickly uh, quickly say what are the just advantages. Okay, so big data is uh, uh, if you use big data, it aids in risk identification, analyzing data for patterns, 
real time monitoring okay and then it will ensure your project success as well as your estimation accuracy it will ensure there are also the estimates will be transparent you'll have everything under the sun that's just uh, recorded and your your uh, your estimation models will just work any time of the day any incident occurs automatically you will just see a blip on your on your it system saying that the effort predicted effort is just prolonged by two hours just like you say that the airline uh, the aeroplane will reach two hours after a time okay so it's going to be it has to be like that something like that and uh, so what are the disadvantages okay what are the disadvantages of uh, uh, of having big data as the collection and then the maintenance and then the costs involved in regularly updating it okay and uh, the costs involved in you know like keeping it secure by encrypting the data and you know like also making sure that the data is of good quality reliable so on and so forth so as much as there are you know like uh, distinct advantages there are also a lot of difficulties that we must overcome but uh, i can foresee a day when uh, when everything will work in sync just uh, and then your historical data will become big data and then it will be just uh, uh, integrated with your estimation process and then your estimation models will be revised uh, dynamically and then they will provide very accurate estimates and also it will lead to your project being successful thank you very much so if you have any questions you can just put it in the q and a box i'll be happy to answer